Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to cover the modern variation of the Scandinavian defense, which is going to be the last video in the series. Uh, so far in all the videos we've been looking at the moves e4, uh, d5, takes and queen takes, which is the main move uh, in the Scandinavian, and after this we've been looking at knight c3 and knight to f3. Today we are going to look at e4, d5, the Scandinavian defense, and after white takes on d5, black doesn't immediately recapture with the queen, thus misplacing his queen and often running into tempo moves after knight to c3, or even in variations after knight to f3 uh, moves such as c4 or bishop c4. So instead of that, instead of re recapturing the pawn immediately, Black plays the move knight to f6, this is the modern variation of the Scandinavian, and prepares to recapture the d5 pawn with the knight. The idea is as simple as that. Now, uh, behind the move there are uh, some intricacies which make it, uh, I would say, complicated, but still it's simpler than uh, the main lines with queen takes d5, and I think it's a fine variation for black. Now the main problems, let's just go over them, after queen takes d5 and knight to c3, let's say, the queen can go to a5, d6 or d8, in any of these variations, black has basically made uh, two queen moves and black is behind in development, while at the same time white has one developed piece, albeit, albeit an, a bad piece because the knight on c3 is misplaced. So with the move after he takes d5 knight to f6, black is, instead of recapturing the pawn with the queen, developing a piece, which is a useful developing move, and preparing to recapture the pawn with the knight, where the knight is going to be on d5, sort of an alakine defense knight, which is end up going to end up either on b6 or on f6. So definitely an improvement on, the, on what we saw uh, last, and black argues that even though he's wasting time moving his queen, white's knight c3 move is bad in, in queen takes d5 lines, here black wants to accomplish uh, equal development without, uh, without having to move his queen too much. And white has three ways to respond, four basically, but one of them transposes. So here, in this position, we are going to look at three moves. One of them is uh, to check with the bishop from b5, which seems... Uh, fairly logical. One of them is the move d4 and the other one is the move c4. Uh, the move c4 is the only direct way to, to punish the move knight to f6 because if you don't play the move c4 then black is going to recapture d5 on his next move. So c4 seems fairly logical and uh, there is some stuff that you have to know but I don't think that uh, playing c4 is too scary. Okay, first let's look at one move uh, which I've played before, this is just by transposition, so there's the move knight to f3, and the move knight to f3 basically transposes to d4, because after knight takes d5, which black is going to play, you play d4. And in the normal uh, modern uh, variation of the Scandinavian, after e4, d5, e takes d5, knight to f6, white plays d4 first, and after uh, black recaptures, white now plays knight to f3, and this is going to be our starting position of the main line. Here, uh, black has a couple of options. Uh, I think there's one really good option and the other two are sort of sidelines now. Uh, normal plans in the in the Scandinavian, which include c6, uh, bishop to f5, e6, bishop to e7 castles, uh, don't really uh, have to be played here because you have recaptured with the knight. So your knight is already uh, very well developed and you can play different, uh, different ideas. So the main move here is the move g6. This is now the Richter variation. And I think it's also considered to be the main line of the modern uh, Scandinavian defense. The other two moves I want to go over first are bishop f5 and bishop g4. Bishop f5 I really wouldn't recommend, I don't like this move. It's sort of going into normal Scandinavian ideas, but uh, without the white knight being on c3, which means that, this, uh, that the c pawn is free to move, which means that your knight is going to be misplaced, which means that your bishop really isn't as useful on f5 as in the other lines. So here, White can simply continue with the move bishop to d3, a useful move trading of the bishop, and black, unless he wants to double his pawns or move the bishop again to an inferior square, has to accept a trade. And now after bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, you can see that uh, white has activated uh, the queen uh, basically for free, and he got that move in for free. So after e6, which black has to play and castles, white is now uh, one move ahead in development and uh, basically has a risk-free uh, position. He's going to play c4, knight c3, bishop to e3, or bishop to f4, or bishop to g5. Depending on what the knight does, the knight can either go to f6 or to b6. 
And Black has to decide whether he wants to push through with c5, which is very rare, uh, because you're going to have trouble uh, saving, your, uh, saving your position. And often after, okay, let's say after castles, Black does play c5 just to show you the position. If, let's say, c3, which isn't the best move, takes, takes. Often in these positions, you are going to have an isolated queen's pawn position where the black pawn is on e6, which means that white will want to keep the material on the board and create kingside uh, attacks with the moves such as uh, knight to e5 and getting his bishop into play, I'm sorry, bishop into play on g5, the other knight to c3, the queen looking at the kingside. So these positions can be fairly dynamic, but as I said, it could be really hard for, for black to push through with c5. So after castles, most often black is going to play the move knight to c6 and concede that he has no central breaks apart from e5. Now after the move such as uh, c4, knight f6, uh, knight to c3, white is simply better. He has more space in the center and a lead in development. That's why after knight to f3 I really wouldn't recommend the move bishop to f5, which might seem tempting and which seems normal because it's the it's sort of the normal Scandinavian idea. It doesn't really work here. Uh, the second move, the second sideline, is the move bishop to g4, uh, which is slightly better. This is the Gipsliss variation. I guess it's a Latvian master. I'm not sure, though. So after bishop g4, uh, white plays bishop to e2, e6, castles, bishop e7, normal developing move. And now once again, uh, the advantage of not playing, of not having played knight to c3, and that, uh, that the knight is on d5, you get c4 in with tempo. Uh, knight to b6 is the main idea, and now knight to c3. And often in this variation with bishop to g4, uh, unlike in uh, in the normal elekine where uh, the pawn structure is slightly different uh, and the pawn obviously isn't on e6, here uh, the same idea can be applied and very often uh, white can play the move c5, forcing the knight into d5 and play that kind of elekine pawn structure, sort of exchange elekine pawn, st pawn structure, which uh, is possible and could happen. So, in these positions, once again, I think that white has more space and white has uh, a lead in development. Not, uh, I don't mean to say that white is so much better, but white's position is easier to play. If you turn on the engine in any of these positions, it's going to be plus one or more for white, which isn't really objective, but I think that white, white has an easier game. Uh, the only thing black uh, can hope for, basically, is... Uh, an attack. Otherwise, uh, if black waits and doesn't do much, then white is going to be better. So I think black should play these positions aggressively and try to get as much pressure on white as soon as possible. Use the bishops and uh, use his knights, use the queen, create some pressure. And white will want to go for the for the move d5 if possible, uh, place his rooks on c1, queen on c2, the other rook on d1 and push through in the center. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the move bishop to g4, and once again, an inferior position for black, which is uh, why I don't think you should play this uh, that way. So after knight to f3, uh, which is the main line uh, of the modern Scandinavian, also called the martial variation, I would recommend the move g6. And uh, g6 goes for a completely different plan. You don't really have to play the move e6. Uh, in order to develop your bishop, you hold off the, the development of, of your c8 bishop, uh, until you see what white is going to do. And I think uh, this is the best way to play. Now here, white has two ideas. One of them is the immediate c4, which is the main line chasing the knight away. But there is an interesting move I've looked at, which is bishop to e2. And with bishop to e2, you can still play c4 later on. But after bishop g7, castles, castles, you don't, you haven't played c4 yet, so you might not want to weaken the d4 pawn just yet. And c4 here is one of the main moves, but you can continue you can continue differently. I've actually looked at positions with b3 and bishop to b2, which I quite liked. And uh, in conjunction with a kingside attack with h4, h5, that could be quite annoying. And still you can play c4 after bishop to b2. So uh, this position with bishop to e2, this sideline is sort of nice. It doesn't go uh, into the main lines and black might not know what to do uh, if you leave the knight on d5. And very often, which I've noticed, uh, the players who play the Scandinavian defense and play the modern variation Unless you chase the knight away from d5, uh, sometimes they are going to move it voluntarily and sometimes uh, they will basically leave it on d5 and the knight is going to be uh, stuck there until you chase it away. So it might cause some confusion in the position, not that it's a big advantage or anything, just psychologically. Okay, uh, after g6, the main move is c4, chasing the knight away. And now knight to b6 is the main move. 
not knight to f6 because you want to keep your bishop as active as possible knight c3 bishop to g7 and now as i said uh, we have the ideas of uh of the Alekine defense with a slightly different pawn structure. Uh, in the Alekine defense, when black plays d6, white has a pawn on e5 when he takes. Uh, the difference is that uh, one pawn uh, goes to goes to d6, either the e pawn or the c pawn. So you can imagine a pawn structure like this. Without the c pawn, that would be the Alekine pawn structure, and it's very similar. So, okay. Uh, in this position, the main move for white is a, an idea from the Alekine c5 using the fact that the knight is stuck on b6 and the main move for black is knight to d5 now uh you don't want to take immediately uh you don't have to take immediately if black ever takes uh and then you take with the b pawn and your uh, d4 weakness is solidified and unless black takes if the knight is stuck on d5 then the pressure on the d4 pawn isn't really that much and white has an okay center and you've actually managed to create a useful expansion with the move c5 even though the move seems weakening so okay remember that in the main line after g6 more often than pushing through with d5 you are going to push c5 and gain space space, space that way chase the knight away from b6 now bishop to c4 is the main move creating uh, extra pressure on the knight now black has to defend once again if black takes you are happy you have a monster bishop looking at uh, the f7 pawn and i think if black takes on c3 uh, then white is much better let's just see the engine evaluation yeah this is plus one and a half because the the bishop is so strong and it's really hard to chase it away you could try knight to c6 and knight here but i guess white has time to stop that in its tracks so okay after bishop to c4 black doesn't take black plays the move c6 safeguarding the knight castles castles rookie one b6 uh, this is the the critical moment and this is the position which you have to study now we've only steered away from the main line for a little bit but uh, the nice thing about the modern variation of the scandinavian is that it's pretty forced and that playing the main line is going to happen in, in almost every game because it's really hard to play well and uh, not play the main line because the ideas are pretty straightforward so here after b6 there's an interesting move uh, white doesn't have to react to this threat obviously you don't have the move b4 which you could play later on you could take and play b4 but the main move here is bishop to g5 and the main move for white is bishop to e6 and now there's a very interesting uh, there's a very interesting move that has never been played uh, we are still sort of in theory three games with knight d5 three games with cb6 one game with queen b3 and those are all okay moves and white actually scores a hundred percent from this variation which doesn't speak much of the modern uh, scandinavian but still uh, those are grandmaster games but there's an interesting move here rook takes e6 and after rook takes e6 uh, f takes e6 white is supposed to have a huge advantage so more than plus one and a half after the move queen to e2 and that's a very interesting move which i uh, which I've studied somewhat, but I can't really see the advantage, so uh, I have to study it some more. I, I really think that white doesn't have enough compensation for the exchange, even though uh, the position is so closed, and uh, as long as this knight stays here, uh, you cannot open the d-file. So the rook uh, on a8 is arguably much worse than any of white's minor pieces, and white has a lot of activity, but still, you need to play actively to justify this. So this is just one idea which I would recommend you check out for yourself. It has never been played in a strong game, uh, or at least it's not in the databases, and it's uh, it's a pretty fun idea. You create some weaknesses, and your uh, your minor pieces are better than the rook, so it's worth investigating. So this would be the main line with d4. Uh, so once again, after d4, knight takes d5, knight to f3, I would recommend the move g6 for black. And uh, for white, I would recomm recommend the move c4, even though bishop to e2 is interesting. Knight b6, knight c3, bishop g7. Remember c5, that's a key idea here. If you continue normally with, let's say, a passive move such as bishop here, castles, bishop to e2, I don't know... Uh, I don't know what white, what black plays here. Well, okay, uh, I don't know this position and it's weird with the knight on b6, but yeah, remember to play c5. After bishop to g7, just remember the move c5, and that's the key idea, to chase the knight away to d5 and to create this tension in the center, which is going to be really hard for, for black to do something about. Okay, uh, the next move I would like to look at briefly, after the move knight to f6, instead of playing d4 or knight to f3 going into the main lines the move uh, the move bishop to b5 and this move sort of tries to defend the pawn but not really uh, 
Uh, bishop to d7 is the main move, uh, and now bishop to e2 is the main move for white, giving away the pawn. But there's another move I would like to look at, and that's bishop to c4. The move bishop to c4 uh, pretends to defend the pawn, but white cannot really defend it. Black plays bishop g4, provoking f3. Uh, knight to e2 wouldn't be that good. So f3, bishop back to c8. Knight to c3, defending the pawn twice, because now it was attacked twice. And now black plays knight b to d7. And black is going to play the move b6 and take back the pawn with tempo on the bishop. So d4, knight b6, the bishop has to move bishop b3, knight bd5, knight d5, knight d5, c4 chasing the knight away, knight f6, and now the move is bishop to e3. And this position I really don't like for white. The engine once again says that white is slightly better, but f3 is a weakness. The b3 bishop isn't really that strong. It's not clear which central pawn you should move. Uh, e5 is an idea for black. You can castle kingside or queenside, but neither seems very safe, and I really don't think that this position is too good for, um, for white. Okay, you have a lead in development, but... Yeah, it's, it's nothing major. So after bishop to d7, I would recommend the move bishop to e2. So you sort of provoked black to move the bishop to an awkward squ square, and then you, you developed your bishop to a square you wanted to develop it to, but I, I think it's not that much. Knight takes d5, d4, bishop f5, knight to f3. You sort of get a similar position with the, the bishop on f5 and the bishop on e2. Uh, black can here once again go for g6 positions, but for some reason, bishop, uh, bishop f5 is the main move. c4, knight b6, uh, knight c3, bishop g7, etc. So I really don't think there's much in this move. Uh, bishop to b5 check. It might be uh, a, a nice sideline for blitz games or something like that. But I would really recommend either playing the main line with d4 or if you want to be aggressive, playing c4. This is somewhere in between and it doesn't really do much. Okay, now let's look at the most aggressive move. After knight to f6, if you want to cause, cause problems for black, uh, if you want to punish the fact that black didn't recapture the pawn, then defend the pawn. It's as simple as that. c4. Okay, uh, after c4, uh, it's clear that black has to do something. If black doesn't do anything, white is going to play d4, knight f3, bishop e2, castle, and be a pawn up in the center having an almost winning position. So black has to react immediately. If you, as I said, if you let white develop normally without trying to break through white's central pawns, uh, c4 and d5, white is going to be better. So white has two moves to undermine the top of the pawn chain, e pawn chain either e6 or c6. I want to look at c6 first because this transposes to the Karo Khan, which is my favorite. So after c6, uh, white plays d4. As always, cd5, knight to f3, and this is now Karokan Panov. And uh, if you want to know the theory in this opening, watch the video on the Panov. Uh, it's really uh, too complicated to go over here. But just remember that if you play the move e4, d5, ed5, knight f6, if you play c4, uh, you need to know how to fight against the Karokan in the Panov attack. And if you play the advanced variation of the main line against the Karo Khan, then this might be um, uh, too uh, too hard for you. And uh, Scandinavian players are going to be pretty com comfortable with the Karo Khan because it's a similar opening. So I think that if you are unprepared for the pan of black, is going to have an advantage. So c6, we are not going to go over in detail because it's a simple transposition to the Karo Khan. So after c4, the only move worth mentioning here is the move e6, and this is the Icelandic Gambit, or the Icelandic Palme Gambit. And even though the move seems aggressive, even though there are some aggressive ideas, uh, I don't like it. Okay, I, I really don't like the move, and uh, so far it has scored... 37% for white, 38% for black, and 25% of the games were drawn. So black has great chances. However, if white knows what he's doing, this gambit is simply no, no good, in my opinion. So for white, if you want to keep the pawn, you have to take. Uh, simple. So d6. If you allow black to take, you're going to be left with an isolated pawn and slightly worse position. d takes e6. Bishop takes e6, of course, and now you have to develop as soon as possible. You have to develop, you have to castle, otherwise you will be punished. Knight to f3. The next moves are going to be bishop e2 and castles, if black allows that. Here black has two, uh, two main moves. Uh, well, there's one more move, there's queen to e7, uh, but this, this move I really... Uh, 
don't like that much. Bishop to e2 isn't that popular here because after bishop to e2, black can take on c4, and that's basically winning for black. So you have to be careful. However, after queen to e7, you can take, uh, you can play queen to e2. And now after queen to e2, knight to c6. If of course black takes on c4, you can take the queen, so no problem. And white now plays d4. And after castles queen side, uh, you might think that this is trouble for white, but uh, if you turn on the engine. White is winning, and if White knows what he is doing, then White is just much better. The thing is about these lines that you need to study them properly. You just have to study them, you have to know them, and you are never going to get in trouble. So after e6, the Icelandic gambit, d takes e6, bishop takes e6, knight to f3. The move queen to e7 is fairly simple to meet. If you play bishop to e2, you are going to lose, but don't blunder play queen to e2, and black's trick didn't work, and now the queen is misplaced, the f8 bishop is blocked, black still has to castle queenside, so queen e7 is a clear waste of tempo. And after knight c6, d4 castles, I think white is perfectly fine. White can play either d5 or bishop to e3, both moves are fine. Okay, and uh, this line in the Icelandic habit, I'm not sure you're going to see too often uh, because it's not that good. Here after d5, uh, yeah, it's it's tricky. Uh, it's winning for white, it's tricky, but yeah, okay, some sacrifices here. The white king is still in the center, so black is pretending to be doing something, but there's really nothing here. There's, there's just nothing here. Okay, you can see that the engine li likes white and there's no problem. So we are not going to look at queen to e7 anymore because I think that's the worst uh, choice for for black. So after e6, Icelandic gambit, d6, bishop e6, knight to f3, I want to look at two moves. I want to look at knight c6 and c5. c5 is an interesting choice because uh, in many variations white is going to strive for the move d4 and sometimes white is going to have to concede to that and play the move d3. So c5 stops any ideas of d4 immediately. Uh, knight c3, knight c6, bishop to e2, queen to c7, castles, castles long. Uh, this is Perhaps a risky variation for black because white obviously has knight b5, knight d5 and stuff like that and still aims to play d4, but I think it's playable for black. And in fact, uh, the engines give it as more uh, as less than plus one for white, which is successful in the Icelandic gambit. But basically, black has given up a pawn and black doesn't have an attack. And this is why I don't really understand uh, the, the significance of this gambit. Okay, now let's look at the main move. Um, after knight to f3... The main move is knight to c6, and now, as I said, uh, white wants to castle as soon as possible. So bishop e2, bishop c5, castles, queen to d7, uh, obviously black is preparing to castle queenside, d3, castles queenside. You have a weakness on d3, you have a hole on d4, but none of that really matters, you're a pawn up and your game is fine. Bishop e3, you, you're forcing an exchange. Exchanging one of Black's best minor pieces for one of your worst minor pieces has to take F takes. Now D4 is not a problem anymore. D4 is a serious idea and after that D5 is a serious threat. Knight C3, Rook C1, Rook E1, uh, D4, D5, E4, E5. I, I love the position for, for white and I, I really don't see... Uh, the compensation for the pawn in black's position. I would just like to look at one game uh, after e6, which black won, just to show you the ideas. So this was uh, this game was played between uh, Andrei Sokolov, who is 25-95, and Jonathan Spielman, 26-25, uh, and black won. So we are going to flip the board. I wanted to look at one game from the Icelandic Gambit just to show you some attacking ideas and how black actually wins if you decide to play this uh, crazy opening. So e6 was played as landing gambit, d6, bishop e6. In this position white uh, went for d4, which, uh, well, knight f3 is a better move, so white already made a mistake here. As I said, white has to know what he is doing. If he doesn't know what he is doing, then black is better or equal. So learn what you what you're doing. So d4, which is going to be a common move, uh, learn how to punish it. Bishop b4 check. Bishop to d2. Queen to e7. Now it looks sort of scary. And uh, here black played bishop takes b4. After bishop takes b4, queen b4 check was played. Knight to d2 and now knight to c6. And now already uh, there's tremendous pressure on the white position. Knight f3 was played. Castles. Black is better, you can see the evaluation bar on the right side of the board. D5, and now 
white is white is losing this is more than minus two uh, bishop g4 yeah which was a mistake but let's say uh, he did play the best move let's say knight takes uh, knight takes b5 okay after knight takes d5 queen to b3 is the best move if you take the knight then this is almost game over look at this king let's say bishop to e2 was played takes here uh yeah i'm not sure why you cannot recapture if bishop takes here yeah just a losing game obviously if white isn't careful if white doesn't castle soon enough then white can get in trouble and it happened in this game so it was fairly simple after e6 d takes e6 bishop takes e6 one mistake uh, led uh, from the position being better for white after d4 now uh, white is black is equal or slightly better if you let the engine think so you have to be precise against the Icelandic gambit but if you know what you are doing you are basically going to be better every game d6 bishop e6 remember the move knight to f3 you want to be able to castle after after bishop to e2 you don't really have to expand immediately uh, and you can you can even play the move d3 as we saw in many variations which is going to be solid enough Okay, um, so this will be the last video in the Scandinavian series. I still have to cover uh, the Petrov, which is going to be the next opening, uh, the Scotch and the Philidor, uh, these three openings in the E4 series. And after that, we are finally on to D4 and uh, the King's Indian and or the Semislav are going to be the first uh, in the playlist. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much for the kind comments and the support. Uh, I hope you like the video. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye bye.